All right, so this is a security class. We're not going to just learn how to make machine learning models, but we're going to learn how to secure them. And for that, OWASP is here for us quite quickly. So here's the first one. OWASP has made a top 10 machine learning risks. So this is uh, the same as web applications and many other things. OWASP is the Open Web Application Security uh, something. And uh, <coughs> project, I guess. So it's very useful to give you a definition of what they think the most important risks are. And here they are in priority from most important to least important. So the first one is adversarial attack, which I've also heard called evasion, which is where you feed it input data to mislead the model. So you have a model that's been trained on something and you create adversarial images, images that are deliberately confusing, that will confuse the model. So if your model has been trained to tell cats from dogs, you take a cat image and modify it so it gets misclassified as a dog. Then there's data poisoning, where you manipulate the training data to cause the model to behave in an undesirable way. So you somehow poison the data it's trained on, and now, of course, it's learned a bad habit. Then there's model inversion, where you um, uh, reverse engineer the model to extract information from it. So if your model is trained to recognize faces, an attacker inputs images of individuals in the model and then recovers uh, information about those people from there. Um, so I have a little difficulty understanding the, the uh, threat modeling here. An attacker is able to train the model on images. And I don't quite understand where this other data came from, like name, address, and social security number. So I'm a little confused about this one. But I think the point here is um, uh, if you train on data, that data can be recovered by people who use the model. So um, it's sort of like you've stored that data in the database. And uh, the so you have possibly exposed that data. Yes, A. Corinne, if you can find some clear explanation of what this model inversion is, that would help me, because I have difficulty understanding exactly how that works. But the general idea I get was used for an NLP problem. Neural linguistic programming? No, natural language processing. All right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, then there's membership inference, where you manipulate the data to cause it to behave in a way that exposes sensitive information. For example, um, you could train it on a data set of financial records and then query it to see if people's records were included there. So this is leaking out uh, data that was used for training. Both ML03 and ML04 seem to me like you're leaking out data that you trained the model on, which is certainly a thing to be aware of. Uh, the model, the data you used to train the model is probably going to be recoverable from the model later. And then there's model stealing. This one I understand. This is a big issue. You have proprietary models like ChatGPT is not public. And it costs something like $40 million to train it. So if you could just steal the weights from it, you would have your own clone of it. And so that might be possible to do that uh, by various techniques. And then, of course, corrupted packages. If you're using Python libraries, you might use a corrupt library, and that would expose your system to takeover and so on. Um, and then transfer learning. You train a model on one task, and then fine tune it on another task to cause it to behave in an undesirable way. So if you train it on manipulated images of faces, and then people use that to a, for facial recognition, now you might have trained it to recognize a certain kind of face as the administrator or something. So that makes sense. You've, you've sort of been able to put a back door in the model. And then model skewing is very similar. You get to manipulate the training data to cause the model to be biased. For example, you could provide fake feedback data to a loan approving financial system and therefore teach it to approve loans it shouldn't be approving. And output integrity, if you can manipulate the output of the model, then you can cause harm to systems. So now if you have a, a model being used in a hospital and you control the output, you could modify the output so it makes incorrect diagnoses. And then there's reprogramming, where you m manipulate the parameters to cause it to behave in an undesirable way. So if a bank is using machine learning to identify handwritten characters, 
you could perhaps manipulate the model to cause it to incorrectly identify those characters and get the wrong amount on a check. So those are this is like all other OWASP top 10 lists I've found. The first two or three make sense, and the rest seem more and more picky and detailed and overlapping and similar to where it's hard to tell them apart. But that's uh, very useful. All aspects of security use these OWASP top 10 lists. They are very good to help organize our thoughts. And this one's, of course, in sort of very early version because machine learning is so new. So I got a kahoot about that. Let's try that. Isn't the model supposed to be trained by authorized input data? Well, that would probably be best, but um, often that's not what happens. For example, um, uh, what a lot of people do is they just put it on the web and let people use it, and then they take what their customers use as input data to train it. Now, I seem to have lost my uh, Kahoot, so I'll just have to open it again. All right. But yeah, sure, I mean, that would be one thing, would be to very carefully control the input data, but there are situations where you don't do that. There are things that are actually learning from the users. And then you, and there's the issue, right, that it is expensive to get all that data. So just using data that came from your users or some free source might be better. ML02 is more common than ML01. Yes, my uh, they're rated, it's a good question. They're rated either by prevalence or importance, and I don't know which. Um, <coughs> I think they're rated by importance. I think on the top 10 web application security risks that I know about better, those are not, it's not just prevalence. Prevalence doesn't really matter. Uh, usually the lower priority ones are more common, but they don't matter as much. It's by uh, importance which is going to be both prevalence and impact. <laughs> That's an interesting statement that MLO2 is more common than one or three. Data poisoning is more common than adversarial attack. Or model inversion. I would have thought the opposite, but I really don't know. I would think the most common thing would be ML01, where you just put up malicious images to be categorized. But but it's hard to know. You have to, I think, get out of the abstract into more defined situations to say what's common because there's so many different machine learning systems. Like if you talk just about image recognition or something, then maybe you could make a more clear statement which one is more common. Looks like the repeatable environment of C++ for A-B testing has huge difficulties on robots. Oh, well, that's interesting. A-B testing on robots. <coughs> Yeah, acorn. So I think you've got it. That's why I think you have to talk about a certain category of machine learning before you can meaningfully talk about the relative uh, commonness of these vulnerabilities. All right. Good. All right. So models trained on medical x-rays and an attacker learns patient names by querying the model. So what's happened here? That's the model inversion as far as I can tell. It's not transfer learning. This really happened. I remember an article about this. They trained the x-ray reader on hospital pictures, and they all had the name of the patient in the corner. And then later on, it was leaking out the patient names because the model had... Um, another thing is, by the way, there were... One thing that happened is the ones that were... Um, that had cancer had the patient mark, and the ones that didn't have cancer didn't have the patient mark, so the machine learning just looked for the mark. 
But anyway, you trained it on data that contained extra data you don't need, and that you will have that, that data will be built into the model. Anyway, that's model inversion. All right, Microsoft's public chatbot Tay learned to say rude things from its users. So what, what was that risk? That was data poisoning. They made a thing that was going to learn to chat from the chat that users put in. So the users had control of training data, and they deliberately put in bad training data to teach it bad habits. So a person wears a special hat to confuse facial recognition systems. What risk is that? I remember I got one of these from DEF CON. This was all the rage a few years ago. There's a special t-shirt with shiny patches that would supposedly stop facial recognition. Yeah, that is adversarial attack. That is modifying the sample to make it hard to categorize. They seem to overlap and it's hard to tell which is which. Yes, absolutely. That is always the case with the WASP top 10 lists. It's not a very clear line from one to the other. I got one more to look at, which is the OWASP top 10 for large language models. They have not only one for machine learning in general, but they have a special one just for large learning models. So here they are, prompt injection, insecure output handling, and so on. So let's talk about these. The number one being prompt injection, which we're going to play with in the first project right after this. Um, this is where you put a question into a large language model that is carefully crafted to trick it into violating its security policy. And this turns out to be a really serious problem and pretty easy to play with. Um, then there's insecure output handling, which will happen when you run a large language model and then you trust the output too much, and then the output might have uh, cross-site scripting or other exploits in it as it gets fed into the next system. Then there's po training, poisoning the training data, like we say. If you can somehow corrupt the training data, then of course the model will learn bad habits from it. And then denial of service. If you can somehow consume a lot of resources by giving it many difficult queries or something, you can freeze it up. Uh, the supply chain vulnerabilities, the model is typically using Python libraries and all that, and so you can be using old or compromised versions of libraries, just like any other software product. And it might reveal your, inf your sensitive information. The data it has learned from, it has sort of memorized, and it may well repeat that elsewhere. People say, uh, many people say, it's just repeating whole sentences and paragraphs. It's copied from others. It's, it's really plagiarism. And that means the training data can be leaking out through the model. Then there's plugins. I don't entirely understand what plugins are at LLMs. <coughs> um, I haven't got any hands-on projects doing this. Apparently, you can write something called a plugin, and you can somehow connect it to a large language model so it takes parameters. Uh, I, I guess it's something like a browser plugin, but I have only a dim idea exactly what this is. But anyway, the plugin can then be insecure. Um, then excessive agency is where you give your model too much freedom or too much power. So your model, uh, here's an example, a personal assistant with excessive permissions is tricked into sending spam. So you have some kind of personal assistant that has the ability to send email. 
and then of course you can be tricked into sending the wrong email. Let's see. She says, let's see, you want to connect text to speech with your LLM. Maybe that would be a plugin. Yes, it sounds good to me. Just I only have the vaguest clue what it would be with the plugins. And then over reliance, which we're seeing a lot of. A lot of people use ChatGPT and they believe the output, when in fact they should be aware that often the output is wrong. So um, that's where you trust it too much. And model theft, just like before. Um, people might find a way to steal your parameters and then they can make a copy of your model without having to pay the exorbitant cost of training it. All right. So anyway, that's a summary of the language model top 10 and I've got a Kahoot for that, which is this one. But you know, this stuff is all new, and I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just trying to learn it like you. So there's a lot of concepts here. And you got to jump in and start learning what you can. And it's also going to change around us. So. This is an exciting time to learn a new thing. But you have to be willing to accept some flexibility. The terms are going to change. These top 10 lists are going to change. You know, we're going to all have to keep scrambling to stay on top of this stuff as it develops. So a lawyer used ChatGPT to prepare a legal brief and it included false references. So what was that? <coughs> that was over-reliance. You trusted it too much. Public LLMs were trained on web data, including alt-right sites, so now they spread lies. So what risk is that? Yep, that's poison training data. You trained it on bad data, so of course it learned to do bad things. All right, you can use tricky questions to trick ChatGPT into writing malware. So what's that? That's prompt injection. All right. So, all right. Andrew. And Tark. All right, good. All right. I'm going to stop this recording.